Welcome to this short video in which we're going to show you a map study for a town in Portugal called Aveiro. And uh, what we have done, we have imported um, raw data, the transportation network. Um, you see this here in the up left corner, Transdev Aveiro base data. Um, we want to have a look at this data, we have this loaded here. Um, uh, we can have actually, uh, let's disable the maps for a second, uh, the labels. Um, this is here the transportation network mapped um, geographically. Um, see roughly where we are here, Portugal, we zoom in. This is the unprocessed raw transportation data. If I take here a little bit the, uh, the scale down of the paths, then you see how this looks like. There is quite a few routes on top of each other. So especially in this area here, um, it will be a challenge to display that in an, in an understandable manner. So we thought in the first instance, we will try to schematize the network, but respecting the geography to still show certain aspects of the geography. For example, you see here uh, where the university is. This is a nice band. It's very characteristic. And uh, also that the network is quite, um, is quite, uh, sits on different grids, right? We don't have a lot of parallel lines here. It's uh, obviously a rather old um, settlement, and therefore, um, yeah, we tried to respect that. So we have developed an automation. Let's go to the software, um, which we called here this this template A topo schema. So, how do we create a map? Well, we take the base data, we duplicate the map, and we call this um, simply map number one. And you see we have all the routes here. This is the unprocessed uh, network data. And we automate now the schematized network, which I we have prepared here. Let's go here where we have our automation. We have here our transdev topo schema. Let's select this. should only take a few seconds. It's been finished. Back to the software. Now we have here um, schematized the network. You see that we have parallelized lines. Um, but yeah, let's look at this in the final rendering. So I'm going to publish this, this data. and uh, basically take the default settings for this. Um, we can select if you want to show real-time bus information, scheduled bus information, etc. We, we just do take the default, which is simulated data. We will have separate videos on where we show how we can map planned data and real-time data. All right, here we go. We have our map. In order to publish the map, I need to add this to my compilation, which is called here this Avedo compilation. I'm opening this for editing by double-clicking. I take this map and put it into this compilation. Here, I'm uploading this to the cloud. This is a very fast process, and we're done. If I go now back to my Avedo map, then I can refresh my browser. We go to the schematized view. There we go. So this is still our unprocessed data. Let's quickly uh, disable the maps and we see a little bit the change nicely here. Zoom out a bit that we see the network better. 
And here you see, this is this map that we have just generated a minute ago. And this is our first suggestion, how a schematized network could look like. You see that we have these elements in here, um, the characteristics uh, of the city, but still quite legible, the different lines up here, if we zoom in, um, we have the line numbers um, brought in. And you see here, we are simulating simply some vehicle movements. Uh, maybe we slow this down a little bit. Then, uh, yeah, of course we have also uh, automated the labels. The labels are placed um, for the different stops. Um, so this is the first result. If we again disable the labels and zoom out here a little bit, this is basically how it could look like. Uh, quite some nice details on the hospital, for example, the interconnects and so on. Um, let's see here a little glitch. Of it. This is the browser here. This is not actually the actual rendering where we have, uh, yeah. Well, Another possibility is obviously to schematize this network in a more extreme way, because this situation up here is rather complicated and we don't have a lot of space. So we would like to bring a bit more space between the routes to make it more legible. But then we need to disconnect um, the, the schematization from the geography. So let's go back to the schematization. We take again our raw, our raw data duplicate it and we call this uh, the map number two. And we do the same thing, but we use a different uh, schematization scheme, which we call schematization scheme B. There we go, and now you see we have now pretty much disconnected the schematization from the topology from the actual geographic network. But I would say again, let's have a look at this uh, in the final rendering. All right, we publish this. And as before, we open our compilation, we take our second map. This is the map that we just generated here. We publish this, we save it. And that's actually all we need to do. We are refreshing our network. This was the network number one. And if I quickly hold my map here, and we now go to the Aveiro map number two then you see that we have a more extreme schematization here. And uh, if for the time being I'm disabling the labels, then we can talk about a few details. Um, you see here, for example, this whole path, maybe it's a bit, we need to scale this down a little bit here. And we see here this uh, whole section has been straightened this case. You can also go back how this looked before. You see before we were respecting those those bands and also these bands and everything has now been simplified, rather geometric. Um, obviously also this section here, this section has been simplified a lot. If we go back to the previous version, Oh, it leaves now my screen. Let's go a little bit back and go back to the new one. You see how this looks like forward and backward. Um, we think, <clears throat> let's go back to the final one. We think due to the fact that we have here um, a rather complicated situation with many routes running in parallel, um, also having here stops, let's get the labels back in here as well, which are not 
perfectly placed. This is still maybe a little bit work outstanding, but we see that we have here, we have it more or less correct. And we have here unidirectional stops a lot, which is important to show, I guess, that, um, and of course, not at all stops. You see this here, for example, this particular route, number six, this blue route, doesn't stop everywhere. So this is probably important information to highlight um, in this instance. Well, I hope you found the video interesting and we hope to see you again soon.